Joining me now is Ian Kinsler. Congratulations on the new appointment. You said that you are home. What made the most sense about this fit, Ian? Uh, there's a lot of things that, that made sense about this. I think, you know, obviously Chris Young is the new general manager. We were teammates at one point, um, know each other well. <clears throat> this is my home. This is where, you know, the Texas Rangers uh, was the first team that drafted me. It's where I came up. Uh, you know, I, like you said, I spent eight years there. <clears throat> and it just feels it just feels right. It feels like home. It feels like, um, you know, the team obviously. I spent the most time with and it's home for me and my family so it's a lot easier to be part of the organization and, and help out any way I can so uh, it's, it's all the all the pieces fell into place. You were there in 2010 and 2011 Ian when they won back-to-back -back AL pennants. How does this club get back to that point specifically with the Astros in the same division? Yeah I think it's going to be a really tough division. Um, I think the Angels got better. I think the Mariners got better. Obviously, the Astros are on top. Um, so it's a, it's a very, very competitive division. I think what Chris Young has done in the front office um, has done this winter and bringing in the players that they have. Ray Davis, obviously, is he, he, he's ready to win. He wants to win. So um, there you go, bringing in Boach. Just stabilizing uh, the organization is, is what CY has done. And you know, they're heading in the right direction, and, and hopefully this year the Rangers can, can surprise some people. Ian, I'm in on the Rangers this season. I love what they did the last couple of years. Obviously, two <laughs> off-seasons ago, shoring up the middle of the infield, or infield with Seager and Simeon, and, of course, everything you're doing with the arms. You mentioned Bruce Bochy. You have Mike Maddox as your pitching coach. You're joining the helm now. How excited are you about what this team can actually accomplish this year if all of the pieces are, are put in place the right way? Yeah, I think the pieces are put in place. I, I think really it comes down to health. Uh, when you see teams have success during the course of a season, especially in a competitive division, usually it comes down to the health of the players and um, the amount of time these guys, these these superstars, these superstar players have on, on the field. So, you know, if, if all of those players can stay healthy and, and uh, take their starts and be in the lineup, the Rangers have just as good a chance as anybody. Jacob DeGrom, that's a huge sign. It's a big get, but we always question his health and how many starts he can actually give you. What are you most intrigued by when you see that he is in your rotation as your ace? Um, you know, I, I faced Jacob when I was playing, and it wasn't pleasant. You know, he's, <laughs> known, he's known amongst the players as, as probably the best pitcher in the game, the most electric, and when he has the ball, all, um, you know, the opposition knows they have their, their work cut out for him. So if he can stay healthy and, and figure out a way to take the ball every five days or six days, uh, you know, the chances of, of winning those games go up dramatically. And, and I think everyone knows that, including the opposition. So uh, obviously that was a great sign by, by CY uh, and the Rangers, and, and everybody's really excited to get all these guys going. I love the Nathan Avaldi sign, too. I think he's a great compliment to what you guys already have there. Okay, you were incredibly intense when you played. You were incredibly competitive when you played. And I had a conversation with Emily Jones McCoy that you're not necessarily as intense now, but things have changed a little bit in your mindset going from the playing field to the front office. How so? Uh, well, I was a pretty emotional player. You know, I wore a uh, chip on my sleeve and... Um, sometimes, sometimes it got the best of me, but you know, it was a give and take. It was, it was what got me there and it's it, it what kept, you know, kind of kept me going and kept me on top. And, um, you know, it's something I'm proud of, but at the same time, I've learned to kind of control it and, you know, to be able to, uh, verbalize it a little bit better than, than kind of spouting off. You know, I was, uh, I had a lot of trash talk and, um, you know, was I guess to to some of the opposing teams maybe a cocky player, but um, you know, at this at this stage of my life, it's it's really about just sharing those experiences with with minor league kids and trying to help develop them in, in any way that I can. Yeah, a blessing and a curse. I get it. 14 seasons as a Major League Baseball second baseman, but you have some pretty sick catcher's gear behind you. Can you tell us more about that? What is that? That's just some old school catcher's gear that. You know, I thought it looked cool as a centerpiece, try to get it up there. I'm, you know, I like the, uh, the history of the game. And um, usually when people come in the house, they ask about that. That's the first thing they ask about. So, you know, it's just, <laughs> a, 
It's just a gathering of some, some uh, old school gear. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, you are the manager of Team Israel for the World Baseball Classic. What about being a manager suits you? I have no idea. We're going to find out. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I was asked to play in the Olympics with Team Israel in the Summer Olympics in Tokyo, and that's when the relationship developed with uh, Peter Kurtz and Jordi Alter, the, the general manager and the president. And um, after the Olympics, they, they offered me to, the managing job for the WBC. And, um, you know, after de developing those relationships with the, with the players and the people that are running it, you know, it, it seemed like a really good fit, a really good opportunity. Um, you know, Team Israel in the 2017 WBC were, you know, they're, they're hard nosed. They played the game um, with a lot of intensity and passion, and, and that suits me well. So hopefully we can continue that trend. Yeah, you finished second to the Netherlands. That's not bad. Of course, they went on to uh, to move further in that. But by the way, Ian, before you took the managerial job for the 2023 WBC, did you happen to see what pool Team Israel was in? No, I didn't see that before. <laughs> it's it's not going to be easy. Would you have it's taken the job, Ian, had you seen the pool prior? Uh, it's a good question. I probably would have. I like a good challenge. You know, it's it's nice to be the underdog and surprise people. And obviously, we got Nicaragua and, and Dominican and Puerto Rico and, and Venezuela in our bracket. So um, the powerhouses of the WBC outside of the United States and Japan. Uh, so it's it's going to be a tough pool. And, um, you know, hopefully we can surprise some people. And you never know in baseball. It's, it, you know, it's whoever plays best that day. It's not necessarily the best players. So, um, I know we're all looking forward to it. No question about it. I, I kid, of course, but it's going to be a lot of fun, certainly up for that challenge. Who do you emulate yourself after as far as uh, perhaps managerial uh, tendencies are concerned? Because it's very different to manage a team versus being a player on a team. Do you kind of take away um, things from managers that you've played for in the past? I haven't thought about that yet, but um, I'm sure the managers of the past will influence me in some way. You know, I really enjoyed Jim Leland uh, when I played for him in the WBC, and he was he was around when I when I was playing for the Tigers. Obviously, Brad Osmus was there uh, in Detroit, and he'll be on the staff hopefully in in Miami with me. Um, Ron Washington had a great energy and uh, was so excited to be at the ballpark every day, and I'll definitely take things from from that experience. And then, you know, really all the guys that I've played for, um, you know, you can kind of take something away from them. I think Alex Cora was, was tremendous my time in Boston. So who knows what's going to happen. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be wearing the metal cleats and the pants up and, <laughs> you know, doing the Jim Leland thing, but um, you know, we'll see, we'll see how it all shakes out. All right, yeah, 2018 World Series champion as a member of the Boston Red Sox. I want to ask you, too, though, about, uh, you know, you had mentioned Ron Washington, 52 years of baseball experience. What a blast. You've been around some tremendous managers and tremendous players as well. You were elected into the Rangers Hall of Fame in August of 2022. Your third baseman, Adrian Beltre, can get into the Baseball Hall of Fame. What was it like playing in the same infield as Adrian? It was an absolute joy. Um, I didn't really have to move my glove much when I was turning double plays because the ball just <laughs> go right into the pocket every time about 95. So um, it was a real joy to play with Adrian and watch him work every day and get prepared for the games. And, um, you know, it, it's funny when, when you talk to a guy that, in my opinion, is a shoe-in Hall of Famer about the Hall of Fame, they, they all seem pretty hesitant about it. Um, and, and in my opinion, he's he's, you know, as much as a full first ballot Hall of Famer as you can get. And um, it was it was a lot of fun to have him as a, as a teammate. No question about it. Ian, congratulations on your new position back at home with the Texas Rangers. Best of luck also managing Team Israel in the World Baseball Classic upcoming. We appreciate your time here on High Heat. Thanks for having me.